Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and today we're taking your health back and talking with you live, streaming live from our studios at Think Tech Hawaii in downtown Honolulu and from my home office in Makiki. Today, Wendy will be talking story with Wendy. <laughs> That's because I have Wendy Oshiro of Mutual of Omaha, where Wendy Oshiro is a reverse mortgage specialist, a CRMP. She'll be discussing financial health, especially for our kapunas. Wendy is also a dog rescuer and a volunteer extraordinaire. Welcome, Wendy Oshiro. Thank you for having me, Wendy. Good yeah. to be here. <laughs> I know, I'm so excited. I mean, I, don't you just love our names? Wendy? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm so blessed. I feel so blessed to have that name. I mean, it, it's such a happy name, and I guess we kind of live into that name, so we're blessed. Yeah. Go. Well, I got okay. the name because I was born on a windy Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you're windy, not windy. No, no, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Wendy, please. <laughs> and you know, I hate it when people call me, hey, windy, come here. I'm like, no, it's windy. But anyway, <laughs> so, Wendy, let's get started and let's just, you tell us a little bit about who you are and your family life. Oh, I'd love to. Um, this is my family. And this picture was taken last year in April. And it was a very special occasion because our family grew by four feet. Yay. And um, before I talk about those little four feet, let me tell you a little bit about myself. So you know how a local style, right? You say where you, what high school you went. So <laughs> I went to a high school and then I went to University of Hawaii where I studied engineering for a while. And then I ended up in education. So um, I became a math teacher and I taught for 16 years. The last 12 and a half years was spent at Hawaii Baptist Academy. And I um, ended up going to that school because I was a new Christian. And my um, one of my really good friends had moved there the year before. She thought it would be a really good place for me to grow. And um, not just to share my faith with the kids, but also to grow in on my own um, spiritual walk. And that's where I met my husband. So Darren is the athletic director for Hawaii Baptist Academy. And um, we got married after I, I moved to that school. And then we had uh, two children, so Paige and Peyton. And um, what makes our family really special, I think, is that uh, we like each other, which is good. <laughs> um, my kids, we, we all enjoy each other's company and we can just sit around and talk story, which is really important because um, together as a family, we also grow in our walk and our faith. And uh, we have conversations all the time about God, about um, the lessons that we learn and are made real, what we see in the Bible and what we experience in life. And, and basically, we, it's like our iron sharpens iron, right? And we just help each other to grow. And one of the things that we love to do is surf. So that's how we got Sophie, um, our little rescue dog. And we just decided, you know, if we want a pet, let's try and um, do some good in the community as well. So Sophie was a homeless dog, uh, was found in Waianae with two little pups. And um, we fostered her for a time and then we ended up rescuing her. Wow, how neat is that? And I know that um, when I, I, I met with you the other day and you had a lot of other friends from this organization called mm -hmm. Fur Angel Foundation. So I wanted to just dedicate some time to this organization. So I know that it's close to your heart and I know that your family really enjoys uh, being with your rescue, Sophie. And that's so important because those furry friends, um, they need to find forever homes. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially during these times when we find ourselves needing these furry friends to help us with mental health and stability. I know it's important because I'm looking at one um, as my, uh, myself, as well as my daughter uh, volunteers tirelessly at mm -hmm. all different dog uh, shelters. So just, uh, will you just share a little bit about how others can get involved with the Fur Angel Foundation or just dog rescue? Yeah, you know, well, before I, I, I share about that, I just like to say that, you know, we thought we were doing something good by getting a, a pup, you know, uh, giving it a, a new, a second chance and a new home, not realizing that this dog was going to change our lives. Yeah. So, you know, this, this, this dog, is when we come home from work or, you know, being out of the house for a while, we open the door and she's doing the Tahitian hula, you know, she's so happy <laughs> to see us. She's, um, she just is a bundle of joy. And then she's 
pretty chill too. She'll just sit next to us and watch TV. She's helped us get out of the house every single day since we've had her, you know, going to the park, getting exercise. So I can understand now how companionship from a pet can really help improve your health. Oh, um, for it, sure. Yeah, it, it just brings so much joy and allows you to express it in a way that you can't to other people, right? So, you know, um, it brings out, it can bring out the best in you if you have a pet that's a really good fit for you. So for Furringer Foundation, we, we do what we do because of the help of volunteers and um, donors. Um, we are a nonprofit organization. And I say we because I just joined the board in uh, September. I really believe in, in their mission um, about actually bringing dogs and people together. And, you know, um, because there's so much good that can come out of that. Um, so we are looking for fosters. Um, and if you're unable to have a pet in your home, then we also take um, donations of either items that can help them like, you know, the puppy pads or um, beds and blankets and, um, you know, toys and things like that. Um, but financial donations also help a lot too with the, the vet bills, which can be really large. Like um, one of our last pups, I think it was $8,000 because they had parvo. So any kind of help, uh, we'd really appreciate it. Just go to the www.furangelfoundation.org website and you can learn more information there. Wow. And I know towels are always in, in desperate yes. need just so that when we wash yeah. them up and clean them up, mm -hmm. uh, towels go quickly. So yeah. all that love and affection from your furry friends can help us all with our own mental health and stability. So yeah, guys, call the Fur Angel Foundation and help bring home one of your very own fur angels. Um, it's, it's just so rewarding and exciting, yes. especially like mm -hmm. you said, we think we're doing a favor, um, you know, by getting a dog. But I mean, actually the dog comes home to us and it's therapy yeah complete therapy for us so invest in your your well-being by going out and getting one of those fur angels <laughs> yeah so That's you know i found a slide on uh, uh, in our next slide i found this one slide <laughs> you look like you're 20 years old in there and you're with <sighs> your parents so tell us a little bit about your parents oh yeah that was like when i was 20 i'm trying to work out right now to get back down to that skinniness <laughs> <laughs> but um so those are that's my mom and my dad and I think it was my birthday um my parents are, are really special to me we weren't particularly close but you know what I gained um they contributed to my life so much and I'm glad I have a moment to honor them um my dad he was um an engineer so very analytical but at the same time he was very social and he liked to be in the community he loved to volunteer he was active with the United Okinawan Association. So for him, he had great joy in being active, you know, playing golf at the club, being with people. Um, and as for my mom, she was totally on the other side. She enjoyed being quiet with her Bible. And for her, she's my spiritual influence because without her prayers, I might not be talking to you about the Lord's influence on my life and, you know, how he's changed my life entirely. So my parents are actually the reason why I do what I do. And I'll share more about that later, but, um, you know, they, they were for a time, very, very active. My mom also used to go bowling once a month, I mean, once a week on Sundays. And, uh, she really looked forward to that time. Um, and it was really nice to see them active and, and happy and, um, uh, just thriving. Sounds to, um, like you had a great family life. I mean, I would not know that, the, you know, we all have family issues, but <laughs> the, the foundation is solid and, you know, you had that growing up. So that's why you were always, you know, you always knew that that was there for you. So, mm -hmm. you know, I have a, a, I found another photo and it's a photo of a house. I believe your father built this house and it served as your family home for the past 30 years. Tell us what this house or this home meant to your parents. My dad found this property. It was on a sugar flume. So the house is built on a sugar flume. Um, it's an IAEA. So I guess the sugar flume is where they used to put the sugar cane and have it go down to the CNH sugar mill. Um, so it was kind of, to me, it was special because it was a piece of history. And my dad took great pride in it because he actually designed the house and he built it with his friend. And um, they lived there for just about 30 years. And 
home, his home was his castle. It was really funny. Like this is my picture of him when he came home from work, you know, in my mind, I see him getting, um, changing his clothes and sitting in his lazy boy recliner chair, turning the TV onto the news. He would have beer in one hand and boiled peanuts in the other. And that was like his throne in his castle. <laughs> that was his time to unwind. And he just loved it. And, you know, for my mom, she enjoyed, like I said, she enjoyed quiet moments. She would go feed the birds um, at a certain time every day outside of uh, the back door. And um, she named the birds too. I mean, it was uh, <laughs> it was a really, really um, inviting and, and um, calming place for them. Right. But you know, that's the key, right? I mean, like when we raise children, they like everything to be, you know, like, you know, the same, you know, like system. Mm. And yeah. our parents, my parents is like your parents. I mean, come home from work. But my dad, his castle was his home as well. But he'd go to the yard, tend to the yard, and mom would be cooking. And then we'd be setting the table, and then we'd watch Flintstones and Gilligan's Island in the news. Right? And it was every day it was the same thing. And we saw, all sat down together for dinner. Yeah. We cleaned up, and then we sat down again, watched more TV and homework, and then we went to bed. And right. that was life, how I remember it. So very similar to your your upbringing too, Wendy. And oh, yeah. Father. Yeah, we built our own home as well. And so the the love and the passion behind it is just not another home that we purchased. We, yeah. we have sweat equity in that mm -hmm. home. And so I can really relate to your, your family's story. Um, I know that in 2005, I know your father suffered from a stroke. Mm. How did this stroke impact your family? Well, it was unexpected. Um, my dad had gone to an eye doctor appointment and a lady went to the receptionist and said something's wrong with this man. So my dad was um, hiccuping and he was um, drooling and immediately they recognized he was having a stroke. But even though they tried to treat, he was in Straub Hospital. They treated him right away, but he still suffered um, paralysis on one side of his body. So he lost his independence, you know. And one year later in 2006, my mom had an aneurysm and then she had um, um, bleeding. She had strokes from um, the surgery to clot the bleeding in her brain. So she lost her independence as well. So it was a tumultuous year from 2005 to 2006. And they both had their um, um, health episodes on the first week of school, 2005 for my dad, first week of school, 2006 for my mom. So it was, it was crazy and I didn't last very long. I ended up um, having to quit my job so that I could handle their affairs and um, try and take care of them. And, um, you know, it was really difficult because nobody teaches you how to be a power of attorney, how to be a successor trustee, and I was going from the standpoint of being a math teacher, right? I'm looking at numbers. Right. How am I gonna pay for their care? Um, what's the best way to do it? You know. So I was thinking all, a lot about the money and not so much about their quality of life. Right. And I, I wish there was some sort of class, you know, that you have to take to understand that quality of life for the people that you are entrusted with, you know, their care is important. Mm -hmm. um so because I didn't realize it was important I actually sold their house right. I sold their house because I thought that was the only way I would get money to pay for their care um and my dad was telling me from the care home you know Wendy I want to go back home I want to go back home he was not happy where he was in his care home and mm -hmm. I I didn't listen to him I just thought no we got to sell so we can get money to pay for your care you know so um, the, the sad thing was, I was actually approached by one of my parents from HBA who said, hey, Wendy, I have a solution for you and it'll help your folks stay in their home. And they came, she brought her friend to my house to meet with me and talk about this solution. And she kept mentioning reverse mortgages. And I was like, why are you talking about reverse mortgages? And then she said, well, because that's how you're gonna help your parents stay in the home. And I believed all the myths about reverse mortgages and I shut them down and I said, no, we're not talking about this. And that was the end of that. So the sale went through, my dad never got to see his home again. And it wasn't until after like four months later, I had, was I had had no job, I quit my job, I was so stressed out. I learned about reverse mortgages during that time. 
And um, I, I was so, um, it just was a terrible feeling to think that, wow, I really didn't do my research and I didn't entertain an option that could have given my dad his wish, which was to remain in his house and to help me see that we did have money. We, we did have money to pay for care if I had looked at this option better. So um, I was offered a job, ironically, by the same person that I sent away because my parents um, had told her, hey, Wendy had a change of heart. You know, she found out through her son who was in my class that um, he had visited me to see how I was doing. And uh, they ended up, she ended up offering me a job as a reverse mortgage specialist at a bank. You know, so that was 15 years ago. And uh, here I am today trying to do my best to help people be open to learning about it. So I'm like totally no pressure when I meet with people who are thinking about a reverse mortgage because I want them to feel comfortable and knowing that they can ask whatever they want. It can take as long as they want, uh, but they know they can trust me to give them good information and help them make an informed decision you know wow. so that's wow. how I what care. a learning experience and I know you know I know the kind of person that you are and so yes um that's why I I, I understood because I only knew you from your commercials and I understood what we needed to do because of what your testimony was on your commercial and I would hear it constantly and I would wonder what is that all about what and so you know a lot of people, I would say majority of the people, um, what you experience when your mom and dad had their health challenges, a lot of people are thrown into that arena and frantically wondering, how am I going to manage? How am I going to survive? And what can I do? So your responsibility, Wendy, is a great one because you need mm -hmm. to find them. You know, when times are good, you need to find them so that you can breathe this knowledge and information and they can prepare themselves. So when and if something did happen, they are financially, mentally prepared as one more step in the process of life. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Well said, Wendy. That's well yeah. said. You mentioned <laughs> and, you know, about preparation. Yes, we always should yeah. live in preparedness. And that's, mm -hmm. that's so important. So we need to get your information out um, so more and more people can understand, hey, let's, let's, let's just listen. Well, we have a clear mind and we're not stressed out. And um, when, yeah, you need to get that message out to more and more people, especially in these times, you know, where a lot of people are um, having health challenges now. And so we need to get your word out even further. But before we go further, I have a question from one of the viewers uh, in the audience. And they wanted to know, how do I find the right reverse mortgage partner to work with? Um, it's good to interview. Uh, who you're thinking about working with and well, how do you find them in the first place? Well, to be honest with you, there are not a whole lot of reverse mortgage specialists in Hawaii. Um, I think I only know of maybe about five altogether or six at the most. Um, however, any lender can probably do a reverse mortgage, but it does benefit people to work with a specialist. Um, a specialist is one that doesn't do any other kinds, uh, kind of loans, um, only reverses. And that's important because reverse mortgages have different guidelines and regulations than um, uh, the traditional mortgage um, loan officer you know, has to follow. Uh, we also see the reverse mortgage products as a financial planning tool. Um, it's not just a mortgage that you, know, you apply for and you get. You have to know how it can help you in retirement, how it can improve your cash flow, how it can increase the chances of you having sufficient cash flow, cash flow throughout the entire retirement, you know, not just today and not just take the money and go spend it on Vegas or something. You know, we, we, we are trained to um, teach the partners that our clients work with, you know, like financial advisors and attorneys, insurance people, you know, um, CPAs. We teach them how to use equity in a way that benefits their client, not just today, but throughout retirement, giving them a better retirement with more security and peace of mind. Wow. You know, that's important. So I would like you, going back to your question, I kind of digress there, but um, interview. It's important to interview the people that you want to work with for your reverse mortgage and see how much, how comfortable you are with their knowledge with the way that they will serve you 
Um, for instance, my commitment to my, my clients is as long as I'm able, you can call me and I will assist you. You know, I have people that I've helped with, um, help get their loan 15 years ago that still call me. And if they have a question about their mail, want me to help um, go get with them on the phone and call the service center, you know, um, that's my pledge to my, my customers. So when you talk to, so you out there, when you're talking to prospective loan officers, what do you expect from them going uh, into the future? Do you still want their help? You know, because those are important questions to ask. Will you still be there for me? Um, you know, how so? Um, tell me about how you continue to service your clients. You know, because it's not just about taking an application. It's about how the loan officer is going to um, help the uh, customer make an informed decision before it, that even starts. The education part is so, so important. And I think by talking to a loan officer, you can tell. You can tell if they um, are selling a product or if they're trying to help, help you have a better retirement. Well, wow. you know, the topic of our show is taking your health back and what you're trying to give to your clients or your potential clients is taking their financial and retirement health back or even start thinking about it so that they don't have to take it back because they're going to be living it. Mm. And so financial health, uh, health um, is so, so key for us to grow old, more healthy because we have a peace of mind that our our financial foundation is set and we have great advisors like yourself to guide us every step of the way to set it up so our foundation is solid and we grow old in wisdom and in, in greater health and joy so we can enjoy the people around us who need our advice and, and our love as kupuna. And it's something that I'm looking forward to. And so that'll help me to be a better prepared kupuna as mm -hmm. you know we can't do anything about age it's always going to be happening but we can do something about how can we approach <laughs> yeah, we can we can't fight it but we can approach it in a better healthful health, healthful way and so i think that's this is very key and so that's why i wanted you to come on to share and to teach and educate us how can we grow old with more financial dignity and so you're 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 the one because I hear your heart all the time on the on the radio, and I just knew that I needed to learn and understand more. So actually, right now I'm interviewing you. You know that, right? Not just for the show, but <laughs> as a, it's always good to find out. <laughs> we all know other people who might need it, right? So it's right. It's we all do. We all need it. Not who may need it. We all need it. And I yeah. want to be responsible for giving my friends the peace of mm -hmm. mind that they should have as we age uh, together. So I don't want to just be ha happy and healthy by myself. I want everybody around me to have the same things that I have. And mm -hmm. that's something that I know you can bring to, to them and to myself. So All thank right. you, Wendy, for knowing your call and when God called you to do this and you have the right heart and knowledge and uh, training for this. So amen. <laughs> that's a big responsibility. It is, it is. Me. Yeah. But you get great results. And so that's the value of it all. You know, yep. um, I was just wondering, so, you know, after your father had his stroke, did your eating, your family's eating habits change after that? Or are they still the same? Or what's it like uh, on the dining table these days? Well, you know, um, unfortunately, both my parents um, did pass away. Uh, my dad passed away, I think, three and a half years after he had a stroke. And my mom, um, she lived, uh, I think, about seven years, um, eight years after her stroke. Um, but I can see the, the difference in um, quality of life in some of my, well, my clients, you know, and it. It allows them, so, so here's, if, I, if you don't mind me going back and talking a little bit about um, what the reverse mortgage does for people just in a nutshell. So it allows them to be able to access the equity in their home, you know, to, to convert some of that to cash that they can use to pay for things while mm -hmm. still having full use and title to their home. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not a whole lot of assets you can pull from and, and still own it, you know, um, but this is one that's really, really special, and they can use it to, to afford better nutrition, to afford prescriptive medications, to afford activities or transportation or trips to visit family that 
you know, just fill their hearts with love and fulfillment, you know, to see their kids or their grandkids. Um, that's what equity through a reverse mortgage, converting it to cash can help people do, you know? Wow. Well, yeah. you, you nailed it. I'm glad you added that in because that right there, bringing them equity, this uh, and a little bit more that they can spend on better quality of food. You know, because everyone says, oh, eating healthy is expensive. But when you do it right, it's actually mm -hmm. not. Um, and I can contest to that as well. Mm -hmm. But um, just having the peace of mind that you can afford organic or one more mm -hmm. level of better than having to settle for the two, you know, the 99 cents burger. So, <laughs> you know, versus a $2 apple, of course, the $2 apple is better. But we don't know that if we don't have that option because financially we don't. Yeah. So what you are bringing to the table is giving them a quality of life for their options to enhance their lives ahead of them. Wow, so amazing. And, and, and just because of what you, 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 you had to go through, and you yeah. had to learn and uh, go through this process so that you can save other people's lives as well as yours and your family and your friends near to you. So touche for heeding to the, the call, girl. I'm so proud of you. Um, so I know I know that you have a son and a daughter, but I know that your daughter Paige and you are you have a special bond and you guys are really close. And I know because I met Paige. We did her wedding favors as she recently got married, but I also know that she joined you in your business as a reverse mortgage specialist. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Theo. Oh, I'm so proud. Daughter, working with you, girl, that is success. Yeah, I am blessed. I am blessed. So both, um, you can call Paige or you can call me and we're both happy to help you. She is a wonderful, wonderful professional and she, she's teaching me how to embrace um and love other people she she is free with that like i'm like oh, i don't want to hug but she's really just giving of herself all the time she invites people into her space you know and um the kapuna really appreciate that because they know that she really loves them wow that's that's so sweet so you know we heard your passion behind being a reverse mortgage specialist you and Paige there to serve let the rest of us know how do we get in touch with you so that we can better prepare prepare ourselves for our futures. Feel free to call me, text me, email, or check out my website. So all the information is right there. And I'm uh, happy to help you however you're comfortable communicating with me. Wow, thank you so much, Wendy Oshiro. So we have to leave it there for now, Wendy. We've come to the end of our show. You've been watching Taking Your Health Back on Think Tech Hawaii. Mahalo. To Wendy Oshiro, a reverse mortgage specialist, for talking story with us and for better preparing us on how to grow older with more financial health and confidence. Hawaii mahalos you, Wendy Oshiro, and we're grateful for your valuable information. I'm Wendy Lowe, and we'll see you back in two weeks. Aloha, everyone. <laughs>